Welcome to Future Consideration, SB Nation's NFL Draft Show. And that's Ryan. He's sitting in for Dan, but he also watches college football. Way too much college football. Mm. Like bad college football, Iowa game college football. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's bad. I watch mostly NFL. We're here to talk about the various college players entering the NFL. Starting out with mocking the draft's new mock draft. Number one, once again, Tampa Bay taking Jameis Winston. Yeah, I mean, you heard that Jameis Winston went down to Tampa, met with the team. They seemed very impressed with him in terms of his knowledge of the game and how he interviewed. And I bet that's all there is to say about Jameis Winston, right? It certainly is. We'll get into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers needs a little bit later on in the show. Next up, Leonard Williams going to the te uh, Tennessee Titans. We've seen this before. Uh, Dan Rubenstein and I think that Leonard Williams might have the uh, might be the surest thing in this year's NFL draft. He's he's if not the surest, he's one of the scariest things in this year's draft because he will make everybody's day miserable that he has to play against. And three, the Jaguars taking Dante Fowler from Florida. You're a Florida guy. I am, yeah. Dante Fowler, one of the few bright spots of this Florida team the last couple of years. Uh, had a great combine, was super fast, super strong. Looks like, you know, he could be a game-changing pass rusher in Jacksonville, and that's something they could certainly use going forward, not getting any younger on the defensive Any line. relation to Chris Fowler? We're all related in the, some way, Matt. The football Fowlers. Yeah. Uh, let's bounce around now. Uh, at number six, mocking the draft has Mariota falling to the Jets at six this week. Yeah, interesting given that there's been a lot of rumors going around that Washington is going to take Mariota if he's there at five. <laughs> and if, if you had a choice, you could either be the quarterback right now for Washington or the New York Jets. Which would you pick? I mean, I would take the Jets. It's like it's like choosing between... Uh, uh, the correct answer is basketball career. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it will be interesting to see if the Jets could ruin another talented young quarterback. I believe that they believe they can. Yeah. So. <laughs> we won't find out unless... Oh, man. Marcus Mariota, I hope for better for you. Yeah. So. Uh, at number eight, the Falcons taking Vic Beasley, the you know defensive end, outside linebacker from Clemson. Tell me about him. He is a phenomenal pass rusher. He also, like uh, Dante Fowler, had a really nice combine. Um, he's somebody who is so dangerous that even though Atlanta has, as we're going to talk about later, a number of other problems on defense, he may be good enough on his own that he forces opposing offenses to scheme around him, and that opens things up for a lot of other players. That's certainly the role he had at Clemson, making other guys look good just because of how talented he was. And pass rush is certainly the Falcons' biggest need. They have, they have several, yeah. but uh, pass rush is their biggest problem. Uh, okay, at 14, the Dolphins taking Devontae Parker from Louisville. Yeah, uh, I think this is interesting given that Brian Hartline's gone now uh, to Cleveland. Um, Jarvis Landry was pretty good for them last year in mixed spots. And Mike Wallace, I... I've heard rumors that the Dolphins might be shopping him around. There's, there's no clue where he stands in that locker room if he even wants to be there anymore. Uh, Devontae Parker, I'll tell you this, he has some of the best hands of any college football athlete coming out in this draft. He has an exceptional catch radius, he goes up and makes plays, and that is probably the kind of thing you want in Miami right now. Are you now. comparing him to Odell Beckham Jr.? I'm not saying he's not like Odell Beckham Jr. <laughs> and uh, if you're Ryan Tannehill, having somebody who you know you can throw the ball deep and not have to put it right on his hands, he can move around and go get to it, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it is. Uh, 17, an intriguing uh, pick if you're a Chargers fan, Melvin Gordon, the world busting running back from Wisconsin. Yeah, he is an absolute workhorse, and given that uh, the Chargers only scored six touchdowns on the ground last year. That I is think, not many rushing touchdowns. Like, Melvin Gordon might break that in two games if he uh, gets this job. Of course, Ryan Matthews left in free agency. Yes. Donald Brown is a, a lousy signing for them. I don't think Danny Woodhead is going to be your power back. Oh, PFT commenter would be so <laughs> mad at you right now. <laughs> Let's wrap up the mock draft by discussing uh, the Ravens pick at 26. Devin Smith, uh, Ohio State wideout. Yeah, I think this is the first time he's climbed into the first round in our uh, mock drafts. Um, the book on Devin Smith is pretty simple. He's crazy, crazy, crazy fast. And when you just lose Torrey Smith, somebody else who has that kind of game-breaking speed, this is a good option. He has a lot of things he needs to work on. Probably most notably, his hands are inconsistent. Um, some of that is technique, some of that is focus, but given the right situation and given the right coaching, he could be a terrifying weapon because he's one of those guys where you get him the ball in the open field 
and likely as not, it's a touchdown. Certainly an intriguing fit for the Ravens, who do like to throw deep with Joe Flacco. He's got that big arm. The Ravens usually go defense near the end of yes. first round. It would be, uh, but the wide receiver is certainly a need for them. As you mentioned, Torrey Smith left in free agency. Steve Smith is, uh, he's pushing 40. Uh, <laughs> I mean, is that going to stop him? <laughs> Nothing else does. I'll tell you no. <laughs> Uh, those are our thoughts on Mocking the Draft's Mock Draft this week. Be sure to check out the rest of the Mock Draft at SBNation.com. Let's move on. Uh, running backs. You, let me give me, we're going into Ryan Nanny's top five running backs. Expert. In the 2015 draft. Yeah. Number one, kind of a no-brainer. It's Yeah, it's definitely Melvin Gordon. I mean, he was, given what he had to deal with around him at Wisconsin, it's not like there were passing threats that he really had to uh, deflect from getting the attention. He's your clear number one. After that, I would say it's Todd Gurley. And Todd Gurley, if he wasn't coming off an ACL injury late in the year, maybe would have jumped Melvin Gordon. Uh, those are the two names, even as a just a, a casual observer the, of, of the game, I, I would always just see Todd Gurley and Melvin Gordon running over someone yeah. and then burst a burst of speed all the way to the end zone. Uh, Melvin Gordon's numbers defy logic. 7.5 yards per carry in 2014 for almost 2,600 yards and 29 touchdowns. So yeah. that's, it's, it's beyond anything that even makes sense. Right, and given that everybody knew what they were going, it's not like he was a surprise, like, oh man, Melvin Gordon came out of nowhere. They knew coming into the season he was going to be the bulk of the offense, and he took the ball and basically ran all over everybody with it, with the exception of Ohio State. Yeah, and uh, number three, uh, a surprise pick here, you have Amir Abdullah from Nebraska. Yeah, uh, I like him because even though he's not the biggest guy, uh, he's already put on a lot of muscle and weight. He has a reputation, or had a reputation, in uh, the Nebraska locker room of just being a monster in the weight room, uh, which is certainly something you like to see of somebody who doesn't have that naturally bigger frame. He's also a very patient runner. Uh, he doesn't just try to find the outside and just you know run to daylight. He lets plays develop. He doesn't get ahead of his blockers. And he's also a very useful receiver. So he is the kind of guy who, even though he doesn't necessarily have uh, the raw power of a Melvin Gordon or a Todd Gurley, he gives you enough other things to be a very nice second, third round kind of run. Uh, worth noting, he also impressed during his week at the Senior Bowl yeah. and uh, made the honor roll while being while majoring in history. And you know NFL front office people love any player who didn't just major in communication. It's true, and Nebraska football as of late, history seems to be, you know, the focus. <laughs> <for them. laughs> uh, uh, number four, you've got uh, Jay Ajayi, yeah. the only running back who's first name appears in his last name in this draft. Total value there. Yeah. He's his own depth chart, basically. <laughs> uh, I like Ajayi because he reminds me in some ways of Todd Gurley if you like took a little bit away here and there. He's not quite as fast. He's not quite as strong. He's definitely not as good as protecting the ball. He has some fumble issues. Um, Discount Gurley. The one, yeah, he's sort of he's sort of like uh, designer imposter Todd Gurley, which <laughs> is a great thing to have, yeah. uh, certainly. The one question you maybe have about him is that I think he led college football in uh, carries last year, so you worry about mileage. That said, Livian Bell at Michigan State his last year got a ton of mileage, uh, and it's he, not like that stopped like, him. He had like 4,000 carries his last but year. But it's not like that stopped him from being a no. productive running back in the NFL. The so. Steelers were like, we're, we're going to give you the ball more. We like that. What if we could <laughs> double that? And then uh, rounding out your top five, Duke Johnson from... From the U. Yes. From the indomitable U. Uh, so the biggest questions with him are probably size and health. Uh, broke his ankle in 2013 and I think bounced back from it reasonably well in 2014, but still there were, it, it wasn't the kind of situation where they said, all right, we feel confident that we can give you the ball 25 times a game. Um, but he's just totally fearless and terrifying. Like for a guy who's not naturally huge, he plays like he is, and that's a, a very fun thing unless you have to try to tackle him. He's got the right attitude for yeah. someone who went to Miami. Exactly. Uh, a very intriguing top five running backs. It's a deep class. We did not even talk about Tevin Coleman yep. or TJ Yeldon. Yeah. So uh, if you disagree and want to yell at Ryan, please go to the comments. Um, and now let's close out the show with some NFC South Ugh. team needs. God, the can best we just say division in football? Can we just say all and close the show? <laughs> they, need, they need everything. Uh, let's start out at the top of the division, the division champion, the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, 
Uh, this is a team that is slowly working their way out of cap hell. Yep. Um, and when you look at their team needs, uh, left tackle is what jumps out to me. You need their, their, their life post Jordan Gross has not been good. Uh, they've just signed Michael Ower in free agency, but you don't want Michael Ower as your left tackle. No, I don't you can, think so. You can get by with him at right tackle, yep. he's fine, but you want, uh, I would love to see their top pick go towards uh, go towards that franchise left tackle. Yeah. If they can find one in the Cam Newton would probably agree with you. Cam Newton, <laughs> maybe, maybe protect that franchise yeah. guard. Hey Cam, you're really big, you can take the yes, right? Yes, you know. Uh, and then outside of that, uh, you look at last year's first round pick, Kelvin Benjamin, very, very good rookie season. The only problem is that he can only run on one side of the field. Uh, and then your number, Says you. your number two wide receiver is either a 33-year-old Jericho Cotri, uh, Philly Brown, or, uh, ooh, Ted Ginn, they just signed him. He's back. Ted Ginn is back, baby. Boy. Uh, so, so some wide receiver depth might powerful. be nice. Yeah. Uh, what stands out to me is the secondary for the Panthers. Yeah. In that they don't have much of one, they could use a nickel corner, uh, they could use safety help. And that mostly speaks to... Roman Harper's going to live forever. What Roman, are you talking Roman about? Roman Harper might literally be one of the original Romans. <laughs> but they... I mean, look, you have to face Mike Evans. You have to face Brandon Cooks, Julio Jones. You know, six games a year, you're facing top talent wide receivers. Yeah. You need the kind of secondary that can shut those guys down or at least try to limit And it's them. not just top wide receivers. You're looking at in, in the Falcons and the Buccaneers, you've got two wide outs yes. that are both very large and have huge catch radius. Right. Radii. Radii. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the <laughs> Saints. Oh, the Saints. It is not a good time to be a New Orleans Saints fan. Man. Um, they just barely got under the cap like an hour before right. the deadline. Uh, they desperately need a good draft because they are lacking in especially defensive talent, but on both sides of the ball. Uh, it's easy to say that they need a tight end, but I think they're going to try to get some mileage out of the Josh Hill. I, I think, think so, yes. yeah. Uh, so I would say probably their biggest need outside of that would be linebackers. Yeah. They've been bottom five in yards per carry allowed each of the last four years. They were the worst team on third down last year. So if you, you, they just need guys who can get them off the field. It doesn't have to be on the first third down. It just has to be on a third down. You, there is not a defensive fact that uh, you could just make up anything right, right, terrible right. about the Saints defense, and I just believe yeah, it. Yeah, I'd be like, the Saints gave up 8,000 touchdowns. You'd be like, yes, mm -hmm, that, that's, sounds that sounds right. That sounds right. Uh, David Hawthorne and Paris uh, Harrelson are both okay. Yeah. But when they're your cornerstones of the linebacking core, you need to draft talent. Yeah. Uh, and at cornerback, uh, they got good play from Keenan Lewis, but when they traded Jimmy Graham, Lewis then demanded three years guaranteed or he wanted to be let go. So oh, that was kind of the wrong person to alienate. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, I think the Saints should probably go out and try to get an attorney to settle whatever the hell is going on with the Benson family <laughs> at this point. First round, second round, whatever. Just go get a top flight attorney because I get the feeling this is going to get a lot worse and weirder because it's new. Never has a legal dispute in New Orleans been settled quickly and no. painlessly. So. Whoa, the Saints traded Drew Brees for a sixth <laughs> rounder? Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's problematic. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Yeah. Hey, Saints fans, good luck to you. We're, we're going for need, it. You're yeah. lovely people. Uh, Falcons, the Atlanta Falcons, uh, the third best team in this division last year. Obviously, they have uh, some quality talent on the offense. Yes. Uh, the defense, however, as we mentioned during the mock draft, they have zero pass rush. Um, it's been a pressing need. This is a new thing. Over it feels the last, like forever. Over the last decade, they've barely averaged 30 sacks. That's, that's embarrassing. Ten years, Ryan. Because, you know, think about how many terrible Carolina quarterbacks have been over that time period. How many terrible Tampa quarterbacks? You can't. You can't get a couple more sacks of, out of Jimmy Clausen. Like, come, come on. on, that's just—it's just embarrassing. Um, yeah, the other—the other thing that would be great for the Falcons at this point would be to get a really talented tight end. I mean, losing Tony Gonzalez, who Tony Gonzalez, Hall of Famer, yeah, first ballot Hall of Famer, sure thing. Uh, the best tight end to ever play the game. Yep. We are going to place him with Levine Toilolo. How did that go? <laughs> Not great. So I, I don't think it's one of those things where you say, okay, we're going to go find the next. Tony Gonzalez, because that is a fool's errand. But you do need somebody who you can say, okay, he got us 500 yards and six touchdowns this year. He provided us with 
you know, somebody who can oh, open more, up the middle of the field. More. You want someone who want, gets more than 238 yards receiving? I know. I'm very selfish. Like Jealous. That. Jealous. All right. Um, <laughs> how about uh, left guard? The, the offensive line was decimated by injuries yep. last year. At left guard, it was actually an issue of talent. They yeah. uh, cut Justin Blaylock for his poor play, and uh, upgrading through the draft would be good there. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and then cornerback. Desmond Trufant, very good. They spent a first-round pick on him two years ago. Rough rookie season, but really came into his own his sophomore year. The problem is that he can only cover one side of the field. Again, I don't know why you insist that that's true. No. <laughs> yeah, they, they need some help in the secondary for the same reasons that if you play in the NFC South, you're going to have to deal with uh, a lot of talented wide receivers, and with the exception of one team, some very talented quarterbacks. <laughs> Speaking of yep. that exception, segue. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, your hometown oh, Buccaneers. Why did, I didn't. I didn't choose to be born. First of all, <laughs> uh, yeah, they have. Where do you want to start? I how about, mean, how about with their their number one draft pick? Likely right. to be a quarterback. Likely to be quarterback. I mean, you you can't just let Josh McCown walk. No, you really can, <laughs> and you really should. Um, Mike Glennon, do you think he even do you think he even believes that he should have a chance at this point? Does he look like he believes? No, no, he doesn't. He spends all his time just making sure his head doesn't get off center on his giant neck. Here's He'll a talker. <laughs> yeah, there. I mean, it would be shocking unless they traded this pick away, which rumoredly they might trade it to New Orleans for Drew Brees. That sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> Do you want the entire oh Southeast my to burn? Oh my God. Oh my God. So yeah, uh, QB is the obvious need. Uh, that said, whoever that QB is, is going to inherit a disaster of an offensive line. Yes, because uh, the team signed Anthony Collins away from the Bengals. Yeah. Uh, one year later, he's been cut. Cut. Uh, and. While we're talking about cuts, the defensive end Michael Johnson, who they also signed away from Cincinnati, was also cut, cut. after one year. Hey, uh, don't sign. Don't do that. Agents. Or just don't sign in Tampa. Or, maybe. <laughs> it's it's the Tampa effect. Yeah, it could be both. Uh, let's go back to the offensive line. Uh, <laughs> the notes, <laughs> the notes on the offensive line yeah. from Buccaneers. Reads it reads like an internet comment. This guy sucks. He's it, terrible. This it, it actually reads like when the Red Cross sends you an email describing devastation in some other country and asking for money. Like they're like, yeah, we uh, have no water, no power. They did acquire Logan Mankins, but he's not getting any younger. Nope. Uh, center Evan Dietrich Smith is uh, on the downslope of his career. It's just a disaster all around. They, they need a bunch of offensive linemen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then let's. Uh, I would throw in maybe a linebacker too. Uh, Levante David is a monster. Yes, yes he but is. But they did just add Bruce Carter in free agency, yep. but you know, rounding out with some more talent uh, for the linebacking core might be nice as well. Yeah, I mean, nobody thinks that the Bucks are one or two players away from contending for even a playoff spot, probably, uh, but it would be nice to see them build up some depth at some key positions so that there you do, so that next year we're not coming back to this and saying, yeah, there's an entire position group that is a problem. <laughs> you would rather say, okay, we have like two problems on the offensive line, not four. Yeah. Yeah. Woof. Dream Man, high. That that is our review of NSC South team needs. On behalf of both of us, I apologize for laughing through most of it. I'm exhausted. That's the NFC South yeah. effect. Uh, and that concludes this week's edition of Future Consideration. Once again, our thanks to our pals at Mocking the Draft. You can find them on Twitter, at Mocking the Draft, and you can find their mock drafts every Monday morning on SBNation.com. Until then, we'll see you next week.